Hi, I'm Collins, prince of a faraway kingdom called Setia. I was born to the two worst parents ever. Dad and Mum were the king and queen of Setia, and they were the worst the town had ever seen. They shamelessly stole and ate the town's money, and also believed that we were above everyone else because we were royals. My brother, Gerald, who was two years older than me, was exactly like them. Selfish, and a big, empty-headed hunk who was only interested in growing his intimidating biceps and nothing else. I came out different, though. Every time I got a chance, I helped people, even if mom and dad didn't like that very much. Once, when I was 10, I heard this girl crying by the castle gates. <laughs> Somebody! Anybody! I need help! My mom needs medication and we don't have any money! My brother, Gerald, walked up to her and pushed her away from the gates, and then he was so rude. Get away from the castle, peasant. There are doctors all over the village. Go ask them for medication. This isn't a hospital. I don't have any money for that. The king and queen took our farmland away. Please help me. Get lost. I decided that that was enough, but before I could do anything, the girl stood up to my barbaric brother, unwavered by his scare tactics. You're a cow, and you don't scare me. I think I had fallen in love. Gerald angrily shut the gates on her, and that was my cue to sneak through them later with a bag of coins that still from his cloak, as vengeance for what he did to her. I found her at the same spot, looking so helpless. I can help you. She turned to me with big, brown eyes, which I'd never forget, and then I took out the bag of coins and gave it to her. Thank you so much. She hugged me and ran off before I could ask her her name. As I stood up, my leg kicked something. It was a locket. Inside of it was an old picture of a man and a woman I guessed were her parents. I kept it and promised to return it whenever I saw her. But after that day, I never saw her again. In the next few weeks, I busied myself with caring for my plants as Gerald continued to be a menace. Hey Colin, knock knock. Not again. I slapped a hand across my face, exhausted of hearing his dumb jokes. It's a big, sweet, juicy piece of chicken. Nothing you'll ever know about vegan. Real men eat these instead of ugly foul broccolis. Well, why don't you have this? I swung a corpse flower in his face and the smell drained the blood from his face. He screamed like a girl and I burst out laughing. <laughs> Years passed. A harsh winter hit my village, destroying all of our crops and plunging us into months of famine. As everyone struggled to manage, my parents continued to harass them for everything they had. And as soon as they realized that the people were too poor to sustain their extravagance, they organized a search party. You brave men and women are the only hope of Setia. I put my strong sons Gerald and Collins in charge of you. You'll leave the town and search for ripe farmlands and other places. Once you find anything, report back to the palace. I wish you luck. We left that day and trudged through the deep snow searching for farmlands until a thick tornado struck the group on the fourth day and separated us. I was whirled away from Gerald and the group. When I woke up the next morning, I found myself in a lush forest. I walked around, admiring the greenery around me. Suddenly, I heard a growl behind me. Chilling fear shook my bones as I turned around and came face to face with a seven-foot bear. My skin prickled with goosebumps, and just when I thought I was done for, a girl jumped out of the bushes and grabbed me by the hand. We dashed through the dense bushes until we'd given the bear some distance. <sighs> I think it stopped chasing us. Thank you for saving me. I'm Collins. What's your name? I'm Raven. She stood straight, and I was faced with the most beautiful lady I'd ever seen. She reminded me of one of the strong, tall Amazons I often read about in books. What are you looking at? I tried to speak, but I felt like a cat caught my tongue. Uh-oh! It seems like it found us again! Come on! We ran until we reached a small cottage in the middle of the forest. Welcome to my humble abode. You live here all by yourself? Isn't it too dangerous for you? <laughs> Nothing can scare me. In fact, they should all be scared of me. The confident way she spoke gave me a sense of deja vu, and the brave girl from years back came into my thoughts. You know, you look quite familiar. I've heard a lot of pickup lines from guys, but that one is new. A for effort, but I don't think we've ever met handsome. Wait, I'm really serious. I brought out her locket from my pockets. I'd been carrying it around with me since that day, hoping it would lead me to that fierce owner who had faced Gerald, the girl I'd fallen in love with. And now, she was right in front of me. Remember this? You dropped it all those years ago when I helped you with money for your mom's illness. She looked at it as if it were a foreign object, so I opened the locket and showed her the picture of the people inside. I thought she recognized them for a moment, but her expression changed to a frown. I told you I don't know you! That silly 
locket isn't going to change my mind. And have you never heard of doppelgangers? Uh, it's just you look so alike. I closed the locket and slipped it back into my pocket, quite disappointed that she wasn't the one. Raven let me stay with her because I had nowhere else to go. I learned quite a lot about her in that while. How she loved music and loved to dance. We went on food gathering trips together, and in the process I showed her all of my favorite plants and what I loved about each one. This is the Middle Mist Red. It's one of the prettiest and rarest flowers in the world. It looks like a rose. But it's not. It's actually a type of camellia flower. It'll look pretty on you. <laughs> Why don't we try? She turned to the side, and I slipped the flower into her hair. Well, what do you think? I was stunned by her beauty. There were no words to express how beautiful I thought she was. It looks so beautiful on you. Thank you. She grabbed my arm. Come on, there's something I want to show you. I followed her as she excitedly led me past some beautiful glowing trees to a sea with an old ship tied to an abandoned dock. We found a lot of boxes in its storage. Wow, so many boxes. What do you think are in them? Why don't you open one and find out? I opened one of the boxes and was shocked to find it filled with diamonds. Where did they all come from? I have no idea. They're my ticket out of here, to somewhere better. We could share them if you want. Raven and I spent our night on the ship, staring at the stars and talking about our futures. I forgot all about Gerald and everyone until the next morning, when I woke up and found myself surrounded by Gerald in the search group. Today is your lucky day, Collins. Your big brother has come to save you. How did you find me? You weren't easy to find, but thanks to my excellent tracking skill, we tracked the debris from the tornado to here. Gerald started to walk around, looking at everything in awe, and I just knew in that instant what he had in mind. Look at all these plants. It can feed an entire town for years. As if that wasn't bad enough, my back collided with one of the ship's boxes which fell and spilled diamonds. I shifted to hide them from Gerald, but it was too late. Diamonds too? We're about to be the richest royal family in all of Europe. None of the things in the forest belong to you. Don't tell me you'll starve an entire town because you're a plant freak. Gerald directed the search party to take whatever they could find, and there was nothing I could do to stop them. Meanwhile, Raven had disappeared into thin air. I looked around for her, but she was nowhere to be found. I really hoped she was safe. I watched my brother and the group clear most of the forest in a single day, and we returned home. Mum and Dad had greeted us and then directed the guards to take the diamonds to storage. Aren't we supposed to distribute everything to the kingdom? It's still for the people. We're just helping to preserve it but I knew they were lying. When they went to bed that night, I crept into the storage room and stole some food, which I gave to the villagers. Gerald and the group returned to the forest every day to get more food, and I followed them on several occasions, hoping to see Raven. I never found her, but I did discover some Middle Mist flowers, which I brought back to the palace and planted all around. They made me think of Raven. A month passed since I last saw her, until one night I had been sleeping when a loud commotion in the palace woke me up. I went to check on the source and was shocked to find the servants running around in terror. But that wasn't my biggest shock. It was Raven right in the middle of the chaos. In fact, she was causing it. Ha <laughs> ha! Run, whips! I'm your new queen now! Raven? Oh, hey there, my prince. Or should I say, princeless? <laughs> her guards laughed like she had said something funny. What do you think you're doing? What does it look like? I'm taking over the kingdom from your bad parents. What? I thought you wanted to travel and explore the world. That was all a lie I told you to get you to trust me. I knew it wouldn't be long before you royalties revealed your greed and you proved me right. Just like all those years ago when you gave me a bag of stones instead of coins. What? That wasn't me. It had to be that moron, Gerald. He had filled the bag up with stones, not coins. I'm sorry. I honestly thought they were coins. That means the locket is yours. Why did you lie then? I couldn't give up my act, but I'm going to need it now. It's all I have of my parents since I lost them both to illness because of your family. I guiltily returned Raven's necklace to her and looked around the throne room suspiciously. Where are my parents and brother? Sleeping soundly in their beds. You don't think those flowers in the forest were just there, right? Thanks to these guys, they helped me put some sleeping powder into the flowers and I planted them just where you'd find them. I know how hard it is for you to resist your favorite plant. I couldn't believe Raven would trick me this way. <laughs> I had been nothing but kind to her. Anyways, I have a coronation to plan. So please, find yourself to your new quarters, which is the dungeon. 
I was thrown into the dungeon the next morning. Dad, Mom, and Gerald were all thrown in there as well. I keep telling you never to mix with poor people. I hope you've learned your lesson now. For days, they wouldn't stop bickering about how everything was my fault. I wish I could be anywhere else. My wish was finally granted the next week. You, the Queen seeks your presence. I was escorted out of the dungeon to the throne room where Raven sat majestically. She motioned me forward and I approached her. This is hard to say, but I need your help, Collins. Now why on earth would I help you? I know I took your parents' crown away, but they've done worse. And you threw us in a dungeon. I never even did anything to you. Fine, I'll let you all out. Happy? Yes, that's better. Now that's settled, I need you to teach me how to be a proper queen. The kingdom is in debt, and I want to marry Frank, Prince of Mayland, to save us. I heard he's your family friend and very wealthy. He wasn't my friend. He was one of Gerald's thick-headed, dumb friends. And hearing Raven talk about marrying him felt like such a punch to my guts. Fine, I'll teach you. Thank you, and for what it's worth, I'm really sorry about everything. I enjoyed the time we spent together in the forest. She avoided my eyes as she said the words, but I wasn't falling for the pretense this time. You don't have to lie to me any longer, I said and then walked away. As promised, Raven released my family from the dungeon and placed them in a house with thick security. On the other hand, I was free and helping Raven with her lessons. Steady, steady. Thanks. Raven was a quick learner. In no time, she was doing perfectly. I think I've gotten the hang of this. I spun her around as we danced, and when her skin touched mine, my heart felt like it was going to burst into a thousand pieces. I was so caught up in the moment that I didn't notice when the music stopped, and I drew Raven close and kissed her without thinking. She returned my kiss, and when we were finished, she looked at me with those big brown eyes. I think I'm in love with you, Raven. Collins. I'm sorry, but let's pretend like the kiss never happened. I have to marry someone else. She ran out, leaving me standing alone in the ballroom inn. Since that day, she began to avoid me. The following week, Frank arrived in Setia, and Raven hosted a ball in his honor. Guests from all over the world arrived, and I was jealous as I watched Raven laugh at something he said. I had no idea what came over me, but I grabbed a glass of drink and headed towards them. As soon as I reached, I lifted it and spilled it on. Raven? What did you do that for? I glared at Frank. It was like he had seen me coming and moved out of the way, just in time for my drink to spill on Raven instead of him. You have no right to harm the queen. I'll protect your honor, your majesty. Suddenly he shoved me. I shoved him back and we began to fight, ruining the entire ball. Raven was furious with me. This was always your plan, to embarrass my position as queen and ruin my chances of finding a husband. I should have known better than to trust you. She walked away from us while we were still on the floor and Frank quietly slipped out from under me and out the door. Moments later, my parents and Gerald stormed into the room in anger. Where's that throne thief? As they burned with rage, I spotted Gerald and Frank shaking hands. Thanks for getting us out. You're the best, bro. I knew it! Frank had been up to no good, but before I could do anything about it, Raven came into the room and faced my parents. You're all supposed to be locked up. How did you even get out? Foolish girl. You didn't think an old-time friend of ours would just marry you while we were still being held hostage, did you? Raven whistled, and all of a sudden her crew gathered behind her. If you want the throne, you should know I'm not going down without a fight. Gerald's eyes glinted with excitement at the mention of a fight, and the two sides squared up. I decided I had enough of everything and yelled, ENOUGH! Everyone turned to look at me. None of you deserve to sit on the throne. I'm sorry to say, but you're all bad rulers. Dad, Mom, and Raven, you don't even know how to rule! Everyone noticed the commotion and gathered around as I spoke. They nodded their heads to everything I said. I think this time the people deserve to choose who ruled them. Yeah! That's bloody ridiculous. Our generation has held this throne for years. As he attempted to walk up to the throne, Raven and her warriors blocked him. Colin is right. This town needs better. The crowd agreed with me, and moments later, a vote was held and I was elected to be the king. But I didn't want it. I don't think I can do it. Raven walked up to me and touched me on the cheek. You're the perfect leader, Collins. You're kind, passionate, and gentle. This town needs you. Not me or your parents. I allowed vengeance to cloud my mind and make me into a bad person. But you never hated me in spite of it. You still loved me. Raven's words filled me with a lot of courage. I'll only be able to do this with you by my side. Then I'll be by your side. I'm sorry about everything and I love you too. She threw her arms around me and kissed me. And the next day, the town crowned me king. 
I looked over my subjects and made one promise. I will be a better king to you than my predecessors! Then I looked at Raven and sneaked out a middle mist flower from my pockets, which I tucked behind her ear. At least this one isn't poisoned. Oh, come on. Raven <laughs> laughed at my inside joke and hugged me. I love you so much, Raven. Please, be my queen. Really? Of course I'll be your queen. I turned to the crowd and raised Raven's arm. And this is your new queen. <laughs>